Hey guys, you're watching today's Keeping It Real with Vastavi, and I'm really excited. First of all, if you've noticed, I'm switching up the format a little bit. We're going to be doing, you know, just the same kind with me talking into the camera, but um, I'm also, I really want to introduce you guys to people that you may or may not heard of, uh, people that I truly admire and I respect in the, the personal growth, relationship, money, um, industry, and one of those people is Arielle Ford. I absolutely love Ariel Ford uh, before I get into really kind of her books and all that awesome stuff about her you know she spent 25 years living and promoting consciousness through all forms of media okay and she's the author of one of my favorite books it's the international bestseller the soulmate secret manifesting the love of your life with the law of attraction she's also known as the Cupid of consciousness and the fairy godmother of love but today I wanted her to talk to you guys about her new book Wabi Sabi Love, The Ancient Art of Finding Perfect Love in Imperfect Relationships. And ironically, um, just a few days ago, Ariel had a Wabi Sabi Love intervention with my husband Ashish and I. You know, as, as married couples and anyone in a relationship, you always have those little bumps in the road. So if you want to see that intervention that she did with us, go to her website at wabisabilove.com. If you haven't gotten her book, get it. It's just, it's a soulful book. It'll just give you practical strategies that you can use in your relationships. And honestly, what I love about it is that it, it forces you to find the perfection and imperfections. We live in a society where we're always looking for what's not working and, and trying to fix things. But Wabi Sabi Love is great because it really just has you look at the things that you think are wrong or, or bad and just have you see the beauty in it. And um, she lives in La Jolla, California, totally jealous because I want to move to California and we will very soon. And she lives with their husband, soulmate, Brian, and their feline friend. So, Ariel, thank you so much for having this conversation with me today. Thanks, Fasavini. Happy to be here. Thank you. So, as you know, you know, I am the keeping it real guru. And, you know, I, the, the word guru kind of just kind of, you know, people take it so seriously. But I, as you know, because you were totally Indian in your past life, uh, guru is the remover of darkness. And I always say, and I'm sure you can attest to this in your own life, you know, even though guru means the remover of darkness and ignorance, we're all on our own journey, right? We're not, we haven't reached, we haven't arrived, right? We're always working. And so I love that you're talking about Wabi Sabi Love, um, your book, and just also, you know, we're putting a keep and a real twist to it because I know one thing about you, you don't BS. You are, <laughs> you are just straight into the point. And before we get into that, can you just tell my viewers just a little bit about what is Wabi Sabi? Sure. So wabi-sabi is an ancient Japanese aesthetic that honors all things old and worn, weathered, imperfect, and impermanent. And it seeks to find beauty and perfection in imperfection. So for example, let's say you had a big giant vase and it had a long crooked crack down the middle of it. In a Japanese art museum, they would put this broken vase on a pedestal and then shine a spotlight on the crack. So Wabi Sabi Love is about learning to love the cracks in yourself and most importantly in your beloved. And we do this with fun and humor and lightness and by changing our stories about what we think is wrong with our beloved. So, okay, so I'm, I'm going to keep it real with you because you've done that intervention on Ashish and I, but you know, you, I know you've said to me in, in other interviews that we've done that, you know, being a perfectionist which I, you know, I, I'm guilty, you know, at a control freak, you know, you believe that being a perfectionist in your relationship is an absolute dead end to happiness. Why is that? Yes. Okay. So we already know that 50% of all marriages end in divorce and 62% of second marriages end in divorce and 70% of third marriages end in divorce. Why is this? It's because perfection doesn't exist. I actually believe it should be called pure fiction. And yet we're all brainwashed by society to seek out perfection in ourselves, our homes, our kids. HGTV wants our houses to be perfect. And it's really not possible. But here's what is possible. If you put on some rose-colored glasses, how do you like these? These are my rose-colored glasses. They're hot. They're hot. Aren't they hot? There's research that's been done at the University of Buffalo that proves that couples who wear rose-colored glasses have happier, more satisfying marriages. Mm. 
And the reason for this is because they're looking for what's right instead of what's wrong. You know, and what happens with most of us is we grow up in a home where we're taught certain things and we're taught to believe that what we've learned is right, the right way to do it, the right way to load the dishwasher, the right way to hang up clothes, the right way to squeeze the toothpaste. And then we're making our spouse wrong because they're only doing what they were taught. Everything should be in its place. No, it's okay to have chaos and mess. So we end up with all this conflict going on because we're looking for what's wrong instead of what's right. Does that make sense? It does, Ariel. And I, 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 I got to ask you, you got to keep it real with me about this because what about, oh my God, what about when your partner is consistently doing something that truly makes us crazy? I mean, you could just see in my body language. I, I have a thing or two and I love my husband, but you know, I, this is, it sounds, and I totally agree with you, by the way, like it, it's just about, yeah. you know, focusing on what's working, focusing on the positive, wearing those rose colored glasses. But what about when they're doing something that makes you crazy and they're consistently doing something? That makes well, you crazy? tell me what it is. Give me an example. What is it they're doing that's making you crazy? Okay. So I guess I got to keep it real about my life. Okay. That's fine. So, okay. Here, here's my thing. You know, I grew up in a traditional Indian home. Okay, I've talked to you about this, and I do, you know, I cook because I, I do love to cook. It's very therapeutic for me. However, I would love for Ashish to cook once in a while, you know, and it doesn't drive me crazy. It does, but every so often, I would love for him to be like, you know what, babe, I'm going to cook today. But right. Doesn't right. Do, yes. Right. But, but, you know, the truth is, he doesn't want to cook, you know, and... Why should he have to? You know, he doesn't wake up in the morning thinking, I'm going to make Vasavi crazy today. I'm just going to, you know, make her totally nuts. He probably wakes up every morning, God, I love my wife so much. What could I do to make her happy today? Well, there's a lot of things he could do to make sure you're nourished and fed and loved, but cooking isn't on his agenda. You know, so what we have to do is realize that this is your problem not his and right. you're choosing to allow this to create conflict in an otherwise happy marriage and the question is are you willing to put on the big girl pants and just let it go and let him be the great guy that he is and you know maybe just maybe if it's so important to you ask him if he'll learn how to cook one dish and once a year on your birthday, cook it for you so you can have this fantasy and, and this is an important and, and in exchange for this huge sacrifice that he's going to make, you'll do something for him. Maybe he wants you to wear a French, a French maid's costume and high heels and carry a duster around the house while you're cleaning. I don't know what it is, I but find it. a fun way that's a fun solution so once a year, he, he can cook for you, and once a year, you'll do something you normally would never do for him. That I would be that. a wabi-sabi solution. Yes. No, and I, I really love that idea. And this, this gets me thinking about how, as human beings, we can get triggered by stuff that's maybe happened in our past, right? Like, it, it has no bearing on us in the present, but certain things can come up from the past and we get triggered. And I know that you recommend creating code words with your partner. Yes. With other, yes. in, in order to have kind of playful reminders. So what do you mean by that? What are some examples? Well, I'll give you an example. So one day early on in our marriage, I found myself standing in front of Brian like this. I don't know what I was ragging on him about, but I caught myself and I was really appalled at my behavior. And I said to him, you know, the, the next time this happens, and unfortunately I think there'll be a next time, of course. could you just kindly, sweetly say to me, Oh, when did Sheila enter the room? Now, Sheila's my mother's name. I love her to death. She's the coolest woman I know. But she has a tendency to be a bit bossy. And Brian totally got it. And he instantly said to me, yes. And when I get too patronizing, just call me Wayne. And that was his dad's name. Mm. So we quickly took what could have been a World War III situation that would have devolved and gotten ugly and defensive and now we have, have these cute little code names. So when I do get a little bossy, which unfortunately happens sometimes, he just smiles at me and goes, oh, I see Sheila's here. 
or if he's up on his soapbox preaching to me about something or giving me a lecture, I just go, oh, look who's here. It's Wayne. Oh, that's... So we have these wabi-sabi code names that work for us. Now, let me ask you this, because some of my viewers may not be in a relationship, or they may, you know, and they may not be married. Can wabi-sabi love work amongst friends? Absolutely. In fact, I would say if you're not in a relationship, wabi-sabi love is something to start practicing right now. First, start on yourself. We're all really hard on ourselves. We're always making ourselves wrong and judging ourselves. I used to be a perfectionist. And the day that I learned about wabi-sabi, I happened to look down in my lap and there was a big spaghetti stain on my skirt. And rather than feel bad about it, I made up this new wabi-sabi story that the stain meant that I had such a huge appetite for life and I love food so much that I was willing to get it all over me and all over you. Oh, I love that. Yeah, it's just about reframing the story. And letting go of this need for perfection, which isn't possible anyway. I love that because it really does have you going from um, annoyed to enjoyed. And I know you talk about that. Um, I think in a society where we do strive for perfection, we're, we're always going to find reasons to be annoyed because nothing is perfect, right? So how do, how do we go from annoyed and, 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 and pissed off and irritated to enjoyed? Well, first you make a conscious decision so you notice that you're annoyed right and you have to realize that like I said earlier they didn't wake up in the morning looking to make you crazy mm -hmm. so take a little time out don't get defensive or, or reactive go for a quick walk let yourself calm down and then sit with yourself and say okay is this their problem or is it my problem is this reaction really my problem and what new story could I make up about it you know how could I change my reaction to it and then look for something that's kind of fun and cute because it, it is your problem not theirs. I'll tell you a quick story about Barack and Michelle Obama that mm. speaks to this perfectly. Um, Ten years ago they nearly got divorced. Um, their marriage was so bad that Michelle told her mother she didn't think they were going to make it. Barack told his grandmother that, she, that Michelle was so upset with him and nagging him all the time he thought that they were going to get a divorce. And then one morning, Michelle woke up at 5.30 in the morning, and all she could think about was how much she wanted to go to the gym and work out. Mm. And as she was lying there, you know, and Brock's like snoring next to her, she was feeling kind of guilty. Oh, the girls are going to get up soon. I've got to make breakfast. I've got to go to work. And then she thought, you know, my husband went to an Ivy League law school. He could figure out breakfast. <laughs> so she got out of bed, went to the gym. And while she was working out, she had this wabi-sabi epiphany. She realized that she had been waiting for Barack to make her happy. And she realized in that moment that it was up to her to make herself happy. So when she got home, he was at the kitchen table. The girls were eating their cereal. Everything was fine. And she announced some new rules. And the first rule was is that she was finally going to take her mother up on the offer to help her out with the girls and the driving and the shopping. The second rule, she told Barack, from now on, anytime you're in town, we're having family dinners at 6.30. The next rule was, every Sunday was going to be family day, no matter what. Mm. And the final rule was, every Thursday night is now date night. So she went from annoyed to enjoyed because she realized that she needed to have personal responsibility for her own happiness. She was the one who had allowed the schedule to get out of control, who had stopped taking the time to work out, had gotten out of shape, and was letting every little thing get her crazy. And now, as we all know, they're like soulmates in the White House, grandma's living with them, and they have a very enviable marriage. Absolutely. And, you know, it may, it may sound um, counterintuitive, you know, taking that personal responsibility, because Wabi Sabi is, is about, you know, how you're being in relationships, but that's what it boils down to is if you want to have that love in relationships, you have to take personal responsibility. That, that's essentially what Michelle Obama did. Yeah, I'm, try, I'm moving my camera around trying to get this. You see the sunlight coming in on me? I, it's okay. You have a glow. You have a glow. I have this aura going here, so I can't really adjust the lights. It's making me crazy. It's okay. Ah. You're fine. Yeah. 
But yeah, so, so this is really about, you know, whether you're married or you're single or, you know, you know, single, looking for someone, you know, this is really about if you want that kind of love in your life, you have to take personal responsibility for finding it in, in yourself first. Absolutely. So, okay, what is one thing that my viewers can do? And I'm, it's going to be two part. What's one thing that they can do today if they're really annoyed yeah. with their partner? That's number one. Yeah. And with themselves, because like you said, it, it starts yeah. with you, right? So what's one thing you can do today? What's one thing that my viewers can do today? Wabi Sabi love, the Wabi Sabi love way with their partners if they're annoyed and just kind of to be kinder to themselves. You know, and it's really the, the answer is the same for both. The first one is to make a conscious decision to take responsibility for how you're feeling, mm -hmm. to know that your partner is not looking to make you crazy. And you, of course, don't want to make yourself crazy. And then get creative, you know, take yourself out into nature and see what can I find about the situation that's funny or good or has some benefit to it. And what's the new story I could make up around it? You know, how could I totally shift this? You know, I, I shared with you recently the story about how my husband squeezes the toothpaste from the middle and I'm the bottom squeezer. Yeah. And my, my new story was finally that, well, thank God he brushes his teeth. Isn't that great? So every, every time I see my mangled tube of toothpaste, I smile because I know when he gets old, he's going to have a mouthful of teeth. That's the new story. Not that, oh, can he just do it my way? Can he just do it right? Which is where I was stuck for a few years. Oh, my. Okay. By, by the way, just really, that story just made me think about this. When my husband, after he finishes taking a shower, he doesn't close the shower curtain. And I love to have doors shut totally OCD that way. Like I need to have right. the door shut. I mean the, yeah, everything's shut and he always yeah. has the shower curtain open and you just made me think about this. At least he showers every day. Exactly. Every you night. know, Ryan's the yeah. same way. I like the laundry room door shut and he's always leaving it open. So I just shut it. You know, he likes drawers shut really tight and I leave them halfway open. Mm. So he shuts the drawers, you know, so you can look at it and go, Oh, he's doing it wrong, or you can just take two seconds of energy and close it yourself. Yes. You know, just don't sweat the small stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love it, Ariel. I mean, it is totally up to each and every one of us how we want to perceive a certain situation. And yeah. I totally get you with the toothpaste, by the way. Yeah. I totally get you. I'm a bottom squeezer. Yes. So, guys, in the, in the, in the blog below, I'm going to give you a link to Arielle's website so you can get her book, Wabi Sabi Love. So and her website is wabisabilove.com. Yeah. Arielle's amazing. I want to just say thank you, Arielle. Is there anything last, any last thing you want to say? You know what? Um, if you go to wabisabilove.com forward slash gifts, I've got a free five-part video series you can get. But other than that, no, it's been fun talking to you as always, Vazavi. Thank you so much, Arielle. And guys, don't forget, keep it real with yourself.